Hey guys, what's up? Ron Parks here and welcome back to the channel. I want to discuss how you go about figuring out how much you need to save to retire comfortably. I'm shooting this video from my hotel room in Rochester, Minnesota. As I flew here a few days ago to take a look at some rental properties, the Mayo Clinic, one of the world's best hospitals and medical centers is located here and it is one of the biggest businesses in Rochester. Hundreds of thousands of people come and go every year and need housing. I'm taking a look at current prices and what you get for your money and whether an investment here would pencil out. Now getting back to the topic, retirement is a tricky subject because there are so many variables that factor into having enough money to retire. So much of it depends on when you start saving, your current and future income projections, when you plan to retire, and how much money you will need in retirement. Now I want to be clear, I'm not talking about the exceptions to the rule of you retiring at 29 or 35. You can do it, and many people have done it, but you would have to have some liquidity event that brought you in lots of money early on, like working for a tech company that went public and your stock options are now worth a boatload, or inheriting a lot of money, or for that matter, having a usually successful YouTube channel. So let's talk about the usual path to retirement, where you work until you retire. No matter your age, I can give you some reasonable steps to calculate what you need at any age and to start a plan to put money away. You have three questions that need answers. One is how much money do you need to save annually at your age so you have enough money to cover your projected spending in retirement with enough money so you don't run out. Question two is how much money do you need to spend annually in retirement to keep up your lifestyle? And question three, what percentage of your retirement earnings should you anticipate to spend every year? There are a number of protocols that financial planners use to come up with how much money you need to save. Rule of thumb number one is that you need 20 to 25 times your annual salary to have enough money to live your retirement years with some comfort. For example, if you make $50,000 a year, you'll need 25 times 50,000 or $1,250,000. Rule of thumb number two is that you need to have enough money to cover around 80% of your final annual salary just before retirement. So if you make $50,000 a year at retirement, you will need to have an investment portfolio where you can withdraw $40,000 a year. And in this example, you would need at least a million dollars invested. That's 40,000 times 25. And the third rule of thumb is the 4% rule. It says that your withdrawals from your investments should not be more than 4% a year. So here's a rationale. If you start investing at 20 and put away 15% of your salary every year, assuming a $50,000 salary, and you retired at 67, you would have $2,221,000 saved. Boy, wow, that's a big number. Using the 4% rule, you can draw out $67,366 a year, and the principal in your account will not decrease. If you need less money in retirement, well, just reduce the annual amount you withdraw. And if you need more, then you'll increase the percentage. You can expect to earn between 6 and 10% on the market. The historical average of the stock market has been around a 10% gain. But those fluctuate when we have a good market in the years of growth and a bad market in years where, well, we might be in a recession. When you retire, your portfolio can still earn anywhere from 4 to 7%, taking into account an average inflation rate of 2.5%. You can expect that your investments will keep pace with the 4% withdrawal rate. And if you're lucky and the earnings rate is higher than 4%, well, you'll have more cushion. Let's look at another example. Your last annual salary was $100,000 before retirement. If you can live on 80% of your last salary before retirement, you would need to have $80,000 a year available to live the same lifestyle. So if you withdraw 4% of your principal balance, you would need to save $2 million at retirement. According to a survey by the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, the median retirement savings by age in the United States is quite low. Americans in their 20s have saved around $16,000. And in your 30s, they have saved around $45,000. In their 40s, around $63,000. In their 50s, around $117,000. And the median in their 60s, $172,000. These numbers are dismal. It is almost impossible to retire and have your money last if you only have $172,000 available at retirement, even with some Social Security benefits. So. How do you calculate what you need to put away every year instead of using these benchmark percentages? Well, 
You'll need to have to calculate the future value of the money you put away every year. So for example, putting away just $50 a month starting at the age of 25 at a 6% rate of return will result in savings of $107,000 at the age of 67. The magic of compounding interest is really center stage here. The earlier you start, your money will grow and the interest and the dividends on those investments will be plowed back into your account. You will earn on those savings and every year the money grows as the amount accumulates and you earn interest on the balance. All retirement calculations are personal. That's why we have a personal finance channel. So here are some amounts keeping the numbers all static on wages and investment rates, but only changing the number of years to retirement. So here are the following parameters. Your annual salary is $50,000. You save 15% a year and you get an earnings rate of around 5.5%. Based on these data points, this is how much you would have available at the age of 67. If you start at 20, you'll have $1,661,000. At 30, 902,000. At 40, 463,000. At 50, 210,000. And at 60, only $63,000. Here is the most important takeaway. If you start too late, you will fail. If you wait until you're 30 to put money away for retirement, you'll have to save almost $660,000 more during your lifetime than if you started investing at the age of 20. It also will help if you consider a few things about the stock market and where you have your money at retirement and living up to retirement. It would also help if you understood a few things about the stock market and your allocation of money in the market during certain periods of time in your life. The old rule of thumb used to be that you should subtract your age from 100, and that's the percentage of your portfolio that you should keep in stocks. For example, if you're 20, you keep 80%. If you're 30, you keep 70%. If you're 40, 60%. If you're 50, 50%. And if you're 60, 40%. However, with Americans living longer, financial planners are recommending that the rule be closer to 110 or 120 minus your age. That's because if you need to make your money last longer, you'll need the extra growth that stocks can provide. So at 20, you would have 100% in stocks, and at 30, 90%, at 40, 80%, at 50, 70%, at 60, 60%, and at 70, around 50%. It's pretty straightforward but there are tons of retirement calculators available. So you can just search Google and I'll leave a link below for some of the ones that I like to use. It does sound a little complicated with all the numbers and calculations. And if you're not a great math student, then some of these can be challenging. There are so many resources on the web to first calculate what you need to invest every year to give you what you think you will need to spend at retirement. Now you might be able to extend your money by retiring later or wait to withdraw your social security until you're 70 and a half and evaluate your expenses. But the significant variable will always be medical expenses. Medicare, along with a supplemental policy, will give you some coverage as the benefits are excellent. If you have a catastrophic illness or need medical assistance at home or a nursing home, Medicare will not cover that and you will need to have to pay out of pocket out of your retirement savings. So I wanted to give you a little overview about the things you need to think about about retirement and how you plan for the amount of money you'll need. I hope you find this food for thought as it's really important. And there's a lot of ways you can go about thinking about it and planning. So I'm just leaving you with some ideas. And I would really appreciate it if you can leave any questions and I'll try to answer them. Well, thanks for watching. And I would appreciate it if, if you can smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. And until next time.